In this video, Ballet One in the How to Teach Ballet series, Juan Sanchez will take you through a class especially formatted and executed for your beginning students. You'll notice that Juan breaks every single exercise down to its most basic components. And in this way, you can teach your students the proper mechanics of each of these exercises and therefore give them an advantage when they're learning their proper technique. By doing this, you'll be able to build on all the exercises as their training continues and give them a very nice training and curriculum program in their dance education. Now let me tell you a little about Juan. Upon graduating from the High School of Performing Arts in New York City, Juan continued his dance education at the Alvin Ailey American Dance Center, where he received a full scholarship. From there, his professional career included performing in the United States with the Joffrey Ballet, and then in Europe with the London Festival Ballet and the Frankfurt State Opera Ballet. Juan is currently a master teacher on many popular circuits, such as Dance Olympus, Dance Educators of America, and Dance Masters of America. And now, here's Ballet One with Juan Sanchez. Hi, my name is Juan, and I'm going to teach you how to develop a ballet bar for beginner students. Now, the first thing that we need to think about is how we get turnout. How do we get turnout on our legs? Very easily by lifting up our abdominals. Once the abdominals are lifted, then the back falls automatically into place, you have a nice straight up and down vertical line, which will eventually allow our legs to rotate and turn out. Now, as we take our series of demi plies and eleves and releves, we need to look out for certain things. And I'm going to show you what we need to look out for. When you take your demi plie, we need to make sure that the knee is going to go over the middle part of the foot. In other words, it could be the second or third toe. So you take your demi plie and straighten. Now on the eleve, that's E L E V E, eleve, you want to make sure that you again go over the middle part of the foot. You don't want to go forward, you don't want to go back because look how that breaks the line. Now, in this series of exercises that we are going to do, we also want to develop the arch of the foot. So you can notice that I'll do two of the same and then one different. That different one is going to allow the dancers to roll through the feet as they go up to eleve. Now, eleve is different from releve. Eleve is simply a raising of the heels and you lower. A releve is preceded by a demi plie and then you press down. Now, I'm going to show you how we're going to do the exercise and then as soon as we're done with the exercise there is also a combre series the combre series is a bending of the of the upper body from the waist to the top of the head you only want to involve that one area not anything else from the hips at all this is your strong base this is your foundation to allow you to move wherever you would like to go now we're going to demonstrate the exercise for you we're going to start in first position. Prepare five, six, seven, and hold on to the bar, eight. We'll take a demi plie, making sure the knee is over the middle part of the foot. Eleve, be careful not to roll forward or back, roll down. Demi plie, straighten. Eleve, roll down. Now here's the one that has the developing part of the arch here there it is and press up roll down then we'll take half point point half point second position repeat in second position demi plie straighten elevate roll down demi plie straighten elevate roll down A good one here to develop our arches and up roll down half point and point, half point, close third. As the dancer gets stronger and stronger, you want to move the third position over to fifth position. As soon as the fifth position is done, we'll take a combre series. Now in the combre, you want to make sure that you lift up before you allow yourself to bend in any direction. Why? Well, you have all these little vertebrae that are all in line, one underneath or on top of the other. and all. Now close those together, 
our muscles, tendons, and you want them to be able to lift up in order to bend. So we're, we're gonna take the combray series and reach and up and over, come up, bring the arm through the front and open. Same thing away. And two, over, come up, and bring the arm to the front and place. Now, we're going to take the combray to the back. We have turned the head to the right. Why to the right? Because you want to make sure that the dancer is in line from the tip of their head all the way through the abdominals and into the back. We take the combray back and come up. Now we need to get back to center, feel the center, and then we turn the head to the left. And we come right back, come up, feel the center as you bring your head to the front, and finish. Now I will demonstrate that for you. Well, we've just done plies, which is the very, very first exercise that we do at the bar. Why do we do plies first? Very simple and very, very important. It warms up three different parts of our legs. The first is the hip part. The hip part, of course, is where we want that rotation to happen. The next part is the knee joint. The knee joint is going to help us eventually to maintain our balance either on bent knees or on straight knees, or when we take a jump into the air. The next part that, uh, or the third part that we have that we need to warm up, it's the ankle part. This ankle part right here where the Achilles is needs to absolutely be stretched so that as we land from a jump, we're not going to allow our heels to pop up because we didn't allow ourselves to make sure that we 
press down on demi plie at the bar. Okay? Now we're going to start with the next exercise in order, which is tendu. Tendu means to stretch. I think tendu is probably one of the most important elements at the bar. It's the first time the dancer gets to show line, line in the legs. Okay? Now we're going to start the exercise. I'll demonstrate it for you. Prepare five, six, seven, eight. Demi plie one, heel forward two, up three, close four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. Repeat it to the side. Demi plie one, stretch two, up three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. Of course, we will repeat it to the back. Demi plie one, make the leg long as possible. Up two, close three and four, five, six, seven, eight. Demi plie and straighten, elevate, roll down, elevate, roll down. Demi plie and finish. Now I will demonstrate it for you. We've done plies, we've done tendus. Now the next step in forming our bar is degages. Degage is also a stretch, but the brushing action of the foot makes it come off the floor. How high off the floor? More than likely two to three inches off the floor. Now, if we take our degages and we don't use our inside leg muscles, then the leg will start to rotate in and not rotate out. Remember, ballet is based on turnout, so therefore we must make our legs turn out 100%. I will demonstrate the exercise for you now. This exercise, we're going to start facing the bar. We still start in first position. Prepare five and six and seven, place eight. Tendu, dégagé, tendu, close first. Tendu, dégagé, tendu, Close first, side, dégagé, tendu, close first, side, dégagé, tendu, close first, to the back, dégagé, tendu, close first, to the back, dégagé, tendu, close first, to the side, dégagé, tendu, close first, side, dégagé, tendu, close first, all the way off the floor, tendu, close first, all the way off the floor, tendu, close first, repeat to the side, repeat to the back, repeat to the side, and finish. You will have noticed that most of the directions that we take at the bar with movement consist of front, side, back, and side, which we call in ballet en croix. 
on Kra eventually will help us to understand the eight different directions of the body when we get into the center. Our next exercise is called Ron de Jean. Now, Ron de Jean is a little bit different because of the fact that it involves a circular motion of the legs. It is the one exercise where you develop more turnout in a dancer's body. While we are doing the Ron de Jean exercises, it's the perfect place to start to add the carriage of the head. Now remember, in ballet, we dance with every single part of our body. And the carriage of the head is called a polmon. I will demonstrate the exercise for you so that you can specifically see where we place the a polmon and where we don't place the a polmon. We will start in first position. We prepare five and six. Don't forget to lift the tummy muscles, seven and eight. Front and hold, side and hold, back and hold, close first, hold. Repeat that four times on the or. Whenever we go away from the supporting leg, it is called on the or. Close first. We will also repeat it in the opposite direction, which we refer to as on the don't. On the don't is the direction towards the supporting leg. Close. Back, hold, side, hold, front, hold, close. You will repeat that four times. Now we get to use our beautiful faces and our heads at the bar. To the front, you want to turn your head towards the center of the room. To the side, you want to face directly to the front. To the back, you want to take your supporting leg ear, that's this ear right here, and we're going to lean forward as though we're listening to the conversation of the toes on the left side. Close first. Watch that again. To the front, we will take the head towards the center of the room. To the side, we will take the head straight ahead. To the back, we will take the supporting leg and tilt towards that leg and close first. And you will repeat that four times, and then we finish. We want to begin the exercise, and we want to finish the exercise. So this way, we train our bodies in the center to always start the exercise, and we must always end the exercise. You've noticed that I've taken most of the exercises facing the bar. Well, the reason for that is because beginners must have a sense of balance. And that sense of balance comes from being able to hold on to the bar with both hands. Not only will this keep shoulders level, it will also keep the hips level as they execute their exercises. 
Now, as they develop and as they get stronger, you want to rotate your exercises so that they go from facing the bar to facing away from the bar. Then this way, they get a sense of being able to hold themselves up on the opposite side. Both sides lift, but remember, since this arm is out to the side, this one's going to have to work extra hard, while this one is going to just be able to easily place on the bar. Now remember, we have a right leg and we have a left leg. We have to develop both sides so that we are balanced as dancers. So therefore, remember, exercises must be done on the right as well as to the left side. Now, the next exercise, let me just go with you. We've done plies, we've done tendus, we've done dégagés, we've done rond de jambe. Now, the next exercise we do is frappé. Frappé is an exercise that was developed for an actual steps or series of steps in the center. And basically, most of the bar exercises will eventually be done in the center. So therefore, you have to remember, at the bar, we must feed the right information into our bodies so that our bodies are able to understand the technique of ballet. Once we get into the center, things might be a little bit harder to do only because we have nothing else to hold on to. Now, let's get back to frappe. Frappe, in actuality, is going to help us do big, strong jumps. Remember, everything in ballet eventually is going to lead to some kind of jump, some kind of turn, or some kind of jump that turns in the air. Now, I'm going to go ahead and face the bar with this exercise. We're going to start in first position. We prepare everything always five, six, seven, eight. We have half point one, point two, lift three, four. Now, this position right here, we're going to take the baby toe of the leg that's in coupe and attach it to the inside of our supporting leg. That little ankle ball right there is where you want your little baby pinky toe to be at. So we'll start again here, half point one, point two, lift three, attach four, flex on count five. Now, this position here is half of a plie. See? Up, plie. So therefore, the knee has to be turned out. We have to have lots of energy on our supporting leg so that we can come back to the center and be able to push off the floor. Now we're going to face the bar again. Half point one, point two, lift three, touch four, flex five. Now we're going to attack the floor by brushing the metatarsal along the floor and leaving a beautifully stretched, elongated leg. Out, in, out, close first. Half point and point and lift, attach and flex. Frappe, frappe. Close first, half point, point, lift, attach, flex, frappe, frappe, close first, half point, point, lift, attach, flex, frappe, frappe, close first, and finish. Now I will demonstrate the exercise for you. Let me start first by saying that the importance of how we stand at the bar is very, very unique. Every dancer has a different arm length and a different size in the height, whether they're tall or short. But regardless of how tall or how short they are, we still must place our arms on the bar correct. Now, since we started facing the bar, let's look at the distance that we face when we are towards the bar. We want to make sure that as the arms come up through first position, 
those elbows are lifted. It's almost as though we're carrying a big beach ball. When we place the arms on the bar, we want to make sure that the elbows are relaxed and they're down. Why would we not do this? Because this doesn't involve our shoulders at all. We're not going to dance in the center like this. We're going to dance in the center with a long neck and a long spine. So when we face the bar, we have to lightly place our hands on the bar and make sure those elbows are dropped so that we can press down and lift the abdominals up so that we have a beautiful straight up and down vertical line. But eventually our dancers are going to get stronger and we're going to need to face away from the bar. Well, remember, depending on the height and on the length of the arms of the dancer, that's going to determine how close or how far they stand away or too close to the bar. So let's just say for me, we're going to still take our preparation so that we are always prepared. Now let's just take a look at my arm that's closest to the bar. I'm going to open it to the side and then I'm going to lightly place it on the bar. Notice that my elbow is relaxed. Notice also that the placement of that hand on the bar, it's not like this. It is simply with the fingers and the thumb lightly holding onto the bar. Let's talk about the other arm. We still prepare five and six and seven and eight, but we want to make sure that the arm has a circular motion and also that the elbow is not going to be higher than the shoulder. We have a definite point here. Shoulder is the highest, next is the elbow, then comes the wrist, and then comes the finger. Take a little ball, imaginary ball, and roll it down your arm, and you'll notice that the ball will eventually drop through past the fingers. Both arms have to be that way, especially in the center. Let's go on to fondue now. Fondue will be the first time at the bar where the legs will be on the high side. Not very high to begin with, because we want to always think about rotating the legs and turning them out and lengthening them as much as possible. We're going to start in fifth position, and we still prepare five, six, seven, eight. We're going to take a brush, and we're going to bend both knees at the same time. We're going to come up through attitude, still staying in demi-plie, then both legs stretch together, tendu, close fifth. We're going to brush to the side, fondue, bending both knees at the same time. Come up to attitude, and lengthen both legs out, to tendu and close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and finish. After fondues, this is where you would place the leg up on the bar and stretch and make it long, 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 long. What eventually we want to be able to do is to get the dancer to stand on one leg on that supporting leg and be able to do combres, which will eventually stretch those inside leg muscles, which we will definitely need to use as the dancer develops to do higher leg extensions. Now, a very simple exercise for a beginner, we want to make sure that they're still facing the bar, so therefore we'll take and place the leg up in second position. We'll take a simple side combre, which they've been used to doing, 
And just to vary it, open the arm, bring it in through first, place it on the bar. Same thing on the other side, up and over, and come up, and open the arm for a little variation, bring it through first position, and place it on the bar. Take a demi-plie, making sure they don't stick that popo out, bring it right into center. Don't tuck under, because tucking under is going to lock those hips and is not going to allow them to turn out either. So even though they take a demi-plie, make sure they still maintain that straight up and down line and straighten. Then we take an elevé and we roll down. You can take an elevé again and roll down, take a demi-plie and straighten. Then we'll take and lift the leg off the bar, bring it into red today devant. We'll just grab onto the knee, lift the knee up so that we get a nice long stretch and open the knee out to attitude to the back. Now from there, it's totally up to you. We can take it to tendu, take an about face, and then we'll slide into a split on the floor. After the stretch exercise, we want to go on to grand battement. Grand battement is a thrusting of the leg to any of the sides of the body, whether it's front, side, back, or side. But before we do grand battement, let's consider what we did earlier at the bar, which was tendu. Tendu is, in essence, the first part of the grand battement, where we led with the heel to the front and with the toes going to the back. Now, if we led only with the toes, look what would happen to my leg. I would have a completely turned in leg. But in ballet, we don't allow the turning in of the leg. We always want to have the leg completely turned out. Now, if we were to take the tendu a little bit further, remember, it goes into dégagé and close first. Dégagé and close first. Now, the biggest of all is the grand battement. The grand ma will go through tendu, through dégagé, into grand ma, through dégagé, back to tendu, and close. Through tendu, dégagé, ma, through dégagé, tendu, back, close. And of course, same thing to the back. Tendu, dégagé, grand ma, dégagé, tendu, back, and close. Tendu, and dégagé, and ma, dégagé, and tendu, and close. Now, of course, we wouldn't take it this slow. This was just as a demonstration purpose so that you can see what the uh, dégagé and tendu, which eventually leads into grand battement. Now, our exercise that we will do today can either be done in first position for our beginners, or it can also be done in fifth position for advanced beginner to intermediate. I will demonstrate the exercise for you. You still will start in fifth position or in first, depending on your level. Prepare five. Six, seven, eight. Batma, tondu, fifth. 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 Remembering not to forget to brush. After grand battements, we put the bars away and we come center. This is the best part of class, where we get to move as free spirits, of course, depending on what the teacher is going to give us to do for class. Now, we need to make sure that once we get off the bar, that we come back to the center so that we can be still on that same even, straight up and down line. We still think about uh, the abdominals lifting up. We still think about turning and rotating the legs out. But we're going to do a port -a bras exercise that will help us maintain our stance in the center, but will also help us develop those back muscles in order to hold our arms up in place. So just follow with me, and I'm going to show you a simple port -a bras exercise. Here's the exercise for port -a bras, which is carriage of the arms. 
Porte bras will consist of all the different arm positions that we use in ballet. So we start with demi second, back to bra bas, up to first position. We go to low third, open out to second, and reach out to bra bas again. We reach out to demi second, back to bra bas, up through first position, making sure those elbows are lifted. We go out to third low position and out to second position, and we come down to bra bas. We're going to take it a step further. Reach out to demi second, back to bra bas, up through first position. Now, this is the first time we're going to use fourth position arms, and we follow to second and place the arms back to bra bas. And now we reach out to demi second, back to bra bas, up through first, making sure those elbows are lifted. We open out to fourth position, and we open out to second position, and we go back to bra bas. Of course, the exercise may re be repeated, croissé. It can also be repeated in first position, or it can also be repeated croissé to the left. Either way, we still maintain the abdominals lifting, the back straight up and down, keeping the legs rotated and turned out, and making sure that those arms are going to be absolutely soft and supple. After we have done our port de bras with adagio music, we are going to do what we call tendu, which you've already heard of at the beginning of the class at the bar. Tendu in the center can be done in many different ways. You can change the timing, you can go through demi-plié, you can go through pas de cheval, and you can go through enveloppé. As long as you make sure that the out, which is the tendu, is the important part. That's where you need to have the leg absolutely stretched. Let me show you what each of those steps are. You start in third or in fifth position. There's your tendu. Close fifth or third. Pas de cheval. Close fifth or third. Enveloppé starts with the tendu, and it quickly cuts in to coupé front or coupé back. For our purposes, it'll be coupé back and close. Our exercise will consist of four tendus traveling back, going to the side, four tendus traveling forward, going to the side, four pas de chevals going back, of course, to the side, and same to the front, and then we'll take the enveloppés, which are four to the side traveling backwards, and then four enveloppés traveling forward from fifth position. The exercise is as follows.
The next exercise that we are going to do involves arabesque. Arabesque is one of the most beautiful lines that a dancer can obtain. Now, of course, we need to make sure that we have the proper carriage for arabesque. Now, the body must we still remain lifted. Now, as in ton do, the leg is in the back. Now, when the leg lifts up into the air, we have to make sure that it is absolutely stretched. Back to tendu and close first. Now, let's look at the arms in first position with the arms in baba. Come through first position and out to first arabesque, making sure that your right shoulder or your left shoulder will form a right angle. Now, let's go back to braba. Second arabesque, depending on the leg that we're using, is going to be the same arm as the same leg. We go through first position, and we reach out. We still form a right angle. Now, since I have my left arm out, that means that I am using my left leg. Let's go back to first. Now, we go to third arabesque. We go through first position. Now, depending on which way we're facing, the lower arm indicates that that's the leg that reaches out to arabesque. So of course, in this instance, it is going to be the left leg. Close first. Now we will do an exercise that involves the different arabesque lines. We'll still start in fifth position. Start with your simple port de bras and to first position. Demi-plié and tendu devant, close fifth. Demi-plié, tendu derrière, close fifth, open the arms to second. Demi-plié en face, nice big diamond shape in the legs in demi-plié. Chasse through fourth, and you're going to reach out to that first arabesque. From there, you're going to lift plié, pas de bourré, plié and straighten. Demi-plié tendu and close fit. Demi-plié tendu and close fit. Demi-plié, chasse through fourth. Reach out to first arabesque. Plié, pas de bourré, demi-plié. Now, of course, the arabesque lines will be different. Plié, fifth, plié, fifth, demi-plié, chasse, second arabesque, plié lift, pas de bourré. Plié lift, plié lift, plié, chasse, second arabesque, lift plié, pas de bourré. So we did one and we did number two. Now number three.
our next exercise will take us into the wonderful world of pirouettes. Now, pirouettes are very unique in the sense that they require first a balance. Now, that balance must be there in that straight up and down vertical line that we had at the bar, throughout the entire bar, and that we are still trying to maintain in the center. Now, very easily we can do this and obtain this by first taking pirouettes from fifth position. Now, why fifth position? Because the leg can come completely from that demi-plie in fifth right up to red today. And then you can close fifth. Now, for this exercise, we're going to take four quarter rotations to the right. The last time you will close fifth position and back with the right leg. Then we're going to take four quarter rotations to the left. And then the last time you will take and close the left leg and back. I will demonstrate for you two of the four quarter rotations. Remember, in a demi-plie, we must go up. And in a releve, we must press down. Let's make sure that the knee will completely go to the side as we take the retiré position. Up, close fifth, plié. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, close fifth, left side. And one, and two, and plié, arm up, close fifth, plié. Out, close, out, close, plié, arm up, fifth, plié and finish. I will demonstrate it to the right four times, but you remember that you have to go to the left also. Our next set of exercises will consist of petite allegro, translation, small jumps. Now in the family of small jumps, you have jumps that spring, you have jumps that will push off both legs or one leg, and you have jumps that brush. Now we're going to take it from the first one. We have what we call amboite. Amboite is a spring action that goes from one leg to the other. I'll demonstrate four for you right now. Stay here, and we'll place our hands on our waist. Now, amboites can be done in many, many, many different positions. We're going to do them first in tendu. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. OK? Now we're going to take them in coupe devant. Devant means in front. Yum, bum, bum, bum. Close fit. Now we're going to take them in attitude devant, which of course is attitude to the front. Yum, bum, 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 bum. Of course, you may take them to the back, or you can travel them side to side. Now in this next exercise, we will take the emboites in tendu devant, in coupe devant, and attitude devant twice, two at a time. We will take them in quarter rotations. Tendu. Coupes. Attitude devant. Two more to get to the front. Close fit. Now, since we have the left leg in front, you will start it to the left in your class.
Now we're going to the next series of jumps in Petit Allegro. They are the jumps that push off both feet. We'll first start off with échappé. Échappé means to open the legs to second and close the legs back to the position. Échappé can be done in first position. They can also be done in third position. And they can also be done in fifth position. The other jumps that push off both legs are changement. Changement means to change. Now, in our next combination, what we will do is we will take and combine an échappé with a relevé in second position. We will take that three times, followed by four changements. So let me walk you through the next exercise that we are doing. We will start with échappé. Whatever leg is in front, it must open to the side. Now we'll take a relevé. Press. Why do we take relevé? So that the échappé from second must first go to a second position in the air before it closes in back. Then we will do that three times. Then we will take four changements that change feet. You notice that my left foot ended in front. That's because we want to be able to start to the left. So let me show you from the left side. We're still going to take the échappé to second. Whatever leg is in front, it opens to the side. We press down on the relevé, we plie, and now that left leg is going to close in back. You will repeat that three times. Now we're going to take our four changements that will change feet. Now I want you to look to see if I end with my right foot in front so that I may be ready to start again to the right. Here we go. Voila. We've already discussed and did the first two forms of petit allegro, which are springing from one leg to the other, and the set of jumps that push either from one leg to the other or from both feet to both feet back to both feet. Now, the third element in petit allegro are the jumps that brush. Now, because of the fact that these are jumps that involve a lot of muscle strength and a lot of stamina, we will save those for the Ballet 2 videotape. Now, our next series of steps across the floor are going to be chene turns. Now, before we begin the chene turns, turn your feet parallel. And what I want you to do is use your head, which is called spotting. You're going to look, and the body will follow. We're going to look, and the body follows. We're going to look and the body follows. We're going to look and the body follows. Now remember, in chenets, the action of the head with the back is what makes a chene turn. Now, we're going to start in first position. We're going to take a simple eleve up to first position. We're going to take a half rotation, a half rotation, a half rotation, a half rotation, demi plie, straighten. Eleve, balance. Half rotation, half rotation, half rotation, half rotation, demi plie, and straighten, and eleve, and get ready to go again. Now remember, we need to maintain our legs turned out, and we need to maintain the first position in releve. You can't do a proper chene 
without paying attention to the use of these arms. Now, if you notice, I never moved my arms from first position. That's because if I were to open them out to second, I need to make sure that if I'm going to the right, my left side needs to come with me. So watch what happens if I open my arms to second position. See, I need to bring this whole entire side with me and keep myself even as much as possible. Therefore, let's leave the arms in first position. Do not open and close them from second to first. Leave them only in first position throughout the exercise. Once you have done your chene turns using the half turn method, then you want to be able to take them in consecutive moments without stopping like this. Our next series of steps in ballet class are called Grand Allegro. Grand Allegro meaning big jumps. Now, very simple. Across the floor, we will take a jump in arabesque. Now, depending on the method that you study, the step can be called ton levé in arabesque from the Russian method, or it may be called sauté arabesque in the Chiquetti method. Follow me. It's as follows. We're going to start in B+, plus, and we will take a jump in arabesque and through and up and through. Now we're going to take the same thing and start it from the left. We will still do B plus to begin so that we know exactly what leg we are going to use before we start to go across the floor. And arabesque, jump, arabesque, dun. Now, the next step in our Grandolero series is going to be a jump in passe or in retiré. We're still going to start again on the diagonal. And this time, we're going to start with the leg in tendu. And up, 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 up. Now we're going to do the same thing to the left. We will start in tendu. And up, 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 up. Our next step in Grand Allegro is called pas de shot. Adishat, translated, means step of the cat. It's going to go through two passes in the air. Up, up. And of course, you may take this to the left side. Now let's put all three steps together in our Grand Allegro. Prepare and And of course, you may take this to the left. Now, of course, we will do it to the left. Here's how it looks. To continue your students' training, please refer to Juan Sanchez's Ballet 2 videotape, where Juan builds on all the exercises set forth in Ballet 1. Call Kathy Rowe Productions at 1-800-800-5437 to order Juan Sanchez's How to Teach Ballet 2. What's happening, everybody?
Now the Nutcracker is fun, funky, psychedelic, mysterious, and exquisite. Kathy Rowe's Nutcracker Ballet, All Jazzed Up, is now available, and your students can now perform this unique and innovative production. Welcome to my Nutcracker Ballet, All Jazzed Up the first video series of its kind where you'll get a full production's worth of choreography along with an originally orchestrated score and all the costume ideas you're going to need to dazzle your audiences and delight your students. This version of the Nutcracker is so different and so much fun because along with me, Kathy Rowe, my guest choreographers, Audrey Durrell and Ron Stewart, are going to transform this magical old tale to include styles of jazz, modern, tap, comedic, and even theatrical dance. This way, all of the classes at your studio, from jazz to tap to ballet, can all take part now in this holiday favorite. It will be very easy for you and your students to learn because all the material is taught slowly and from the back. You'll see all the dances performed at the studio stage or live in a theater. All of the amazing costumes are by curtain call, and most have been specially designed for this production. So get ready to pack the house and have a ball with this classic, original Nutcracker, all jazzed up. To order the entire package, which includes four 90-minute videotapes plus the soundtrack on CD, Call Kathy Rowe Productions at 1-800-800-5437.